Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm excited to present our New Europe's 2022 paper, Quo Vades, its trajectory forecasting the key towards long-term multi-object tracking. This is joint work together with Vladimir, Alyosha, and Laura from TU Munich. In this paper, we tackle the problem of long-term occlusions in multi-object tracking by leveraging state-of-the-art trajectory forecasting. Monocular multi-object tracking, MOT, is the task of localizing multiple objects as bounding boxes in an image sequence and assigning them an identity-preserving unique ID. State-of-the-art methods decompose the problem into object detection and detection association. Objects of interest can either be visible or occluded to the recording camera. An occlusion occurs when another object is placed between the tracked person and the camera. In this case, the object is no longer visible in the 2D image, however, still present in the 3D world. After the reappearance of the object, the new detection needs to be reassigned to the previous object ID to ensure identity preservation and prevent identity switches. To bridge short occlusions, state-of-the-art methods primarily rely on appearance features and simple linear motion in the image space. In contrast, long-term tracking remains an open challenge. Trackers successfully bridge 50% of occlusions within one second. Still, they fall below 10% when the occlusion extends for more than three seconds. This limitation is often not reflected in standard benchmarks, as long-term occlusions are statistically rare. Standard methods fail to re-ID tracks after long occlusions because the object's appearance, size and position in the image may drastically change. When applying motion models, the model must address the non-linearity of human trajectories, inherent uncertainty and camera projection. To address these challenges, we introduce Covadis, which leverages multimodal trajectory prediction. Once a track is occluded, we generate a small set of trajectories in a bird's eye view. When the object reappears, we use the predictions to re-ID the track. With our approach, we can drastically reduce the number of identity switches after occlusions and improve the performance of long-term tracking. Our method is built on an online baseline tracker output and consists of four steps. In the first step, we use an estimated homography age to transform the bounding box detections to points in the bird's eye view representation. Once a track is lost, we set the track ID inactive and predict a set of multimodal trajectories in the bird's eye view. We filter the forecast to prevent false positive matches and reduce the number of predictions. With the help of the segmentation network, we compute an area of visible free space where detectors should be able to detect objects if present. We end every forecast that should be visible for a certain time window without being matched. Finally, when a new detection appears, we use Hungarian matching in the bird's eye view and in the image space, as well as threshold matches based on appearance vectors obtained by a pre-trained convolutional network. The live performance can be seen here, where we see the object's positions and predictions in the bird's eye view on the left and the tracking results on the right. One of our method's key aspects is the homography estimation between the image and the ground plane. Given a monocular image frame, we first use pre-trained networks to estimate the image depth and segmentation. We combine this information to construct a 3D point cloud from the scene, where we extract the mask, select and fit a 2D plane to the ground pixels. We obtain pairwise correspondences between pixels of the ground plane and the 2D positions in the bird's eye view. We use these correspondences to compute the homography age between the ground and the image plane. During the tracking process, we use the transformation age to project any detection in the image to the bird's eye view representation. Here we use the lower center point of the detected bounding box as the object's position in the image. In our paper, we primarily focus on the static camera setting, for which we only compute the homography for the first frame and apply the same transformation across all frames of the sequence. However, our approach also works for sequences with moving cameras. In that case, we estimate the ego motion of the camera to enable a transformation to a global reference frame, where we can run the trajectory prediction. Another contribution of our work is a study of different trends in the forecasting literature and their effectiveness on the downstream task of tracking. Experimentally, we find that multimodality is the most important part. Models like MGGAN, which cover the main modes with 3 to 5 samples and achieve a high precision recall balance, are best suited for the tracking task. Models producing highly diverse trajectories and usually achieving top performance on the standard evaluation of 20 samples on the distance measures and the forecasting benchmarks actually show inferior performance on the tracking task. This behavior shows a misalignment of both tasks, which needs to be further investigated and improved. Other features, like modeling social interactions, don't seem to impact the final tracking performance. For the future, we hope that more researchers start reasoning in 3D for monocular object tracking and try to apply state-of-the-art forecasting methods. Ideally, tracking and forecasting is implemented in an end-to-end -end manner. Furthermore, both fields need to start working closely together to define precise metrics to build specialized forecasting methods for tracking. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation and following our work.